Welcome back to another episode. So today what I want to go over is the process of using FTP to upload a copy of WordPress from your local computer to your web server and also how to create a database manually. The reason why this is good to learn is, you know, I think the process of understanding file transfer protocol and how to, you know, download and save documents to your local server and from your web host is a good thing to learn. So we're going to go over that now. Uh, the first thing you want to do is log in to your web hosting account. Once you're logged in, you also want to go to the download WordPress area. So go to wordpress.org forward slash download and download a local new copy of WordPress. Once you downloaded it, you're going to have to extract it. Rename the extracted folder to something that's memorable for you, something that makes sense. And then relocate that to the location on your com local computer that is going to be designated for your websites. Once you do that, what I want you to do is go back to your web host, click on my account, and then where it says web hosting, click on manage. Then you're going to click on manage here. And then you're going to be looking for the location that says FTP accounts. Click on that. And then this is the area where you're going to see your FTP account set up. We'll click on configure FTP client. From there, it's going to give you your FTP username and your FTP server location and then your port numbers. So you're going to want to copy those down. Once you have them copied down, what I want you to do is open up FileZilla. And what I want you to do is navigate to where it says File and then go to Site Manager. Or you can press Control S or Command S. And then I want you to create a new site. Name it, whatever makes sense for you in terms of how it's going to be uh, located on your computer and how you want to designate it. And then you're going to want to put in your host URL, which is the FTP, your domain name. And then where it says login type, you want to click on normal, or if you want, you can click on ask for password. And then you want to put in your username. Then what you want to do is put in your password that's for your web hosting account. Once you have that done, click on advanced. Once you have that done, then I want you to navigate to where it says default remote directory. And I want you to put in forward slash public underscore HTML. And then you can check off use synchronized browsing and directory comparison. So once you do that, you can click on connect. And then you click connect. And then you're going to see that folder is empty on your remote server. So we're going to just click on everything here. And we're going to upload all these files. So it's uploading these files to your remote server as we speak. Once the transfer is complete, you'll see that all the files are now located on your remote server. And what I want to do now is refresh this folder. We are in our public underscore HTML folder on a remote server. We're going to refresh this. And now we see we have all the files uploaded there. So the next step is we're going to want to go back into our control panel. We're going to want to go to our databases section. So there's the MySQL databases and the database wizard. This is the one I want you to select, the database wizard. We are going to create a new database, create a database. So you'll give it a name. And then you want to copy down this name because you're going to need it later on when we move forward for the final part of installation. So save the database name. Then you're going to want to create a username. And then you're going to want to generate a password. Make sure it's a nice strong password. And you're going to want to keep a copy of this as well. So once you have the password generated and saved, copied, because you're going to need this, you're going to create the user. And then you're going to want to allow all privileges. Click on Next Steps. And now you created the database and the database user. So remember, you're going to want to keep a copy of this uh, written down in a safe and secure place. You can return home. And now what I want you to do is in a browser, I want you to go to your domain. Once you go to the domain name, it's going to automatically send you to the setup config. So you'll choose your language and continue. And then it reminds you, you need your database name, database username, database password, and database host, um, and the table prefix. So let's move forward. So you'll put the database name here, your database username here, and your database password right there. So the database host is often going to be a local host if you're on a Linux server. And then you can change the table prefix for additional security. 
So whatever you want to put that and then submit. As long as you did everything correct, you'll get this message. All right, Sparky, you've made it through this part of the installation. WordPress can now communicate with your database. If you are ready, time now to run the install. So you click on that. Then you're presented here with the, this screen. You can set the site title. Now you can set your username and I recommend you set this as something unique and then your password as well. Make sure it's extremely strong and unique. WordPress by default gives you a very strong password and you can choose to use that one or you can generate your own. Just make sure it's very strong and then make sure you copy it. And then you're going to want to put in your admin email, the email that you want to receive notifications for. Once you have that inserted, you'll leave this unchecked because if you check it, that means you don't want the search engines to index your website. And that's just bad for SEO. So you're going to want to leave this unchecked. Install WordPress. So now it says WordPress has been installed. Thank you and enjoy. You can click on the login. It'll bring you to the login screen and that's where you'll put in your username and your password. Once you have your username and password inserted, click on login. If you are successful, then you will be presented with this screen where you see you're in the back end of your WordPress powered website. So now we just went over the process of how to install WordPress directly to your web server using FTP and creating a database on your web server uh, using the control panel database wizard. Don't forget, you need to keep a copy of your database name, your database username, and your database password. These are going to be different from your website admin username and your admin password. So make sure you save these in a very secure location. Let's just install a plugin just to see what happens. Uh, we are going to install WP Super Cache. And then we're going to activate it. And now we have it active. Now what I want to do is demonstrate in FileZilla what happens here. So we're going to navigate and now we see that we have WP Super Cache on our remote server, but it's not located on our local server. So what we could do now is we can download that folder and it'll start the process of downloading WP Super Cache from our remote server to our local computer. This is a great way to do manual backups of your WordPress powered website from the control panel from your web server to your local computer. I highly recommend learning this because it'll save you in the long run if you ever need to have a manual backup of your website. Now that's just for the files. Now let's go back to our server. We're here, we're logged into our server. We're gonna go back here. And if you click on the PHP My Admin section, it'll open up a new browser window. You can click on your database. And now you have your database files here set up. So what you can do now is you can go to export custom compression zipped, navigate downwards and go. Now what just happened is you downloaded a copy of your database to your local computer. So with FTP, you can back up your files from your server to your local computer. And with your control panel, you can go to PHP My Admin and you can then export a copy of your database to your local computer. Very simple to do. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe because I'll go deeper into how to manage your WordPress powered website. And if you have any thoughts, ideas, or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll take a look at that. All right, guys, so thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.